can do this alone. I often, I often do. do. I often do. <laughs> Steve Martin. Uh, but this beer cannot be done alone because it's in a giant bomber. and uh, That's only 8%. You could do it. I probably could, but you know what? When I get uh, a sour beer, especially a sour IPA, the first person I think of is my brother Keith. Oh, and that yes. is And that is who I, I want to... sour. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> no. Right. no. No, you're hoppy. <laughs> you're always hoppy. That's right. <laughs> well, this is this has Brit, so it's not necessarily sour. Right? No, it could be... Well, it's farmhouse, so it could be a little funk. A little, it could yeah. be a little tone loke, a little funky comedina. Funky cold. You never know what this could be. But that is what we have today. We have a collaboration from two breweries and a collaboration of two beer styles for this give it a shot i'm andrew and i'm keith and we are about beverages.com and it's a uh, collaborations of plenty <laughs> it is here today with the uh Inv- invasion ipa from mckellar and anchorage brewing uh in alaska uh this was actually brewed in alaska correct they uh, uh, uh mckellar does one of these that's brewed in you said copenhagen? copenhagen it's in denmark where their brewery is at and so then they've collaborated with anchorage to brew this specific one uh which is they're saying is a farmhouse house IPA it checks in at eight uh, percent alcohol uh, l- uh, limited yeah limited yeah, release limited release I don't even and know if you can find a lot of these anymore I remember when I bought it they said oh if you're gonna try it make sure you, you know you get one of these uh, you know get another one if you like get another it. one yeah get another one <laughs> if you like I tell people at work too if you like that wine buy two come back and get some <laughs> yeah <laughs> right away right away so twelve dollars so a little you know not too, I mean, a l- little bit more expensive, but not compared to some other sours that we've purchased in the past. That right. Like. So, right. Uh, definitely not off the scale there. What did catch me, obviously, uh, sad to say initially, was the graphic, which is just very, as you can see up there, very interesting. Uh, it reminded me very much of uh, uh, Adventure Time. Something something about the picture Ooh, reminds Adventure. me of Adventure oh, Time, okay. doesn't it? A little bit? No? Well, yeah, that, yeah, no, I, something I can about, see that. Something about that face. Yeah, that you know, it face. does look like it could uh, be something that's Some on Adventure, Adventure Time, Time yeah. monster or something like that. Yes. So that reminded me of that. And like, I've had kind of hit and miss with McKellar. Like I said, they seem to be very world renowned. I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we don't get things as fresh as they should be because they're big into the IPAs. Like you know, I've had their thousand IBU thing, which was an interesting experiment. It's not meant to be great, but it's an interesting experiment. And then I have had this beer previously. Uh, at one of the parties that we had gone to, and it, I guess it was probably the Denmark version of it, right? Which I didn't realize till I, we were doing research, and I saw the, the graphic, and I was like, "Oh my god, we have had that! I bought it in California." So, you know, it's funny just to digress to the, the Adventure Time thing. Yeah, that, you, you know, there's that one beer that McKellar does, and it's got the yellow label on it, and it looks like there are lemons falling from the sky, oh. and there's the cre- that guy looks like Lemon Grab, <laughs> and he's uh, uh, hopefully you found a picture and put it there. Lemon Grab. Lemon Grab. And he, when I saw that, and I've actually almost bought that beer again because we tried that at another one of Bruce's parties, and that was really good. That was uh, that was even one Eric was at, I think. Was that, oh, okay. That one. Um, I think when you see the label, you'll be like, oh, oh okay. yeah, we all tried right. that. Or that maybe, does sound familiar. I don't know. Sometimes at those parties, it doesn't make it all the way around the table, depending on yeah. how big the bottle is. So, but uh, so anyway, just a little Adventure Time. Yeah, even more connections. In yeah, tra- in whether it's McKellar. whether it's not. Yeah, no, I know that's why when you said what that, I was like, oh yeah. On that show. <laughs> I, don't know, I was afraid it was just going to pop off. <laughs> I, I was too for a second there. You know, like I said, we are, the adventure with one of my last last one of these that we had. Although this uh, seems to be a good amount of pressure in here. I'm always I've gotten better at these, but I always do a little little degree of nervousness. You know, it's funny. I had. So uh, I was trying to make sure the least amount of electronics are the Cuvée Rene, the uh, Lambic, the Goose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, I took the foil and the cap off of one of those the other day, and I was like, oh, there's a cork in there, too. I'd forgotten about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, curses. I thought I was ready to pour this, but no. Not no, quite. I have to uncork as well. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure what glasses to go with, so I went with the, the old trusty tulip glass, which can even work for IPA, so I figured it was the best, uh, best of both worlds. Not the Van Halen song. Well, I can already, again, another beer two weeks in a row. Like, I haven't even picked this. I can smell it. See, some, I think I must have a little uh, allergy with the cat. So you oh, cat. you were doing a little extra pet. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that cat was the best. No. Sorry. Um, <laughs> another Steve Martin reference. More Steve Martin. Fantastic. Um, and so I am not as uh, olfactory, uh, olfactorily clear as you are, so... Um, it's very much that Berliner Weiss kind of looking cloudy. Yeah, that sort of that, cloudy yellow. Yeah. Just very some mild though. carbonation in there, but Actually, the head I think retention mine's even is a little good. cloudier than yours. Could be. Is it? Or am I just getting different light? Uh, I think they're similar. Okay. But yours right. might be a little more. 
but good uh, good head retention and yeah, uh, that very nice much. little fine fine carbonation in there. Yeah. That's like funky garden. Yeah, that is a great balance of funky garden right there. Because there's the funk, but then the, it's not, to me, it's not necessarily fruit yet. I'm getting like a, more of like a, a vegetal, like leafy, basil-y. Yeah, it's, it's very much like herbaceous, like flowers yeah, kind of things. Like I said, uh, for some reason, and there's even like a fruit. There's I was a little say, there's bit even of like a hint of almost like rose petal. There's something fragrant like that in there yeah. like that I normally don't get. There's a little hops. bit of fruit that pierces through at the end. It definitely starts out with the very classic little hay barnyard thing, though. Yeah. But there's enough of the other fruit in there that I'm still fairly excited. Because for me, with Brettanomyces, it's it's a coin flip. I like, yeah, I like that. I can either really like it, because if they do the passion fruity kind of thing, like when we were doing the almanac beers and they oh, were doing yeah. some different, there was that one where like, okay, the older one, you get more of that funk. Right. And then we had the ones that were a little more on the fresh side, and they were just like tart. And they had that, yeah, because that hadn't those dissipated were awesome, yet. So. I like that that's got the funk and the and the herb. I do, action. too. I think that's, that's a great that's, aroma. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Will it all transfer into the taste, the most important thing? We find out. Okay. Next week. No, I'm <laughs> Exactly. Right now. Tune in next week, later at the Hall of Justice. <laughs> Definitely more funk. Yeah. But not like... No, actually, as it lingers there. No, there's quite a bit. Yeah. But it is still stays herby. Yes, um, I get a little bit of a, a little bit of malt, a little malt kick in there. Not bad though. I like it. Pleasant. <laughs> I like it. It's a malt snap. It's it is a, a little it's bit. It's a snap yeah, of malt. That's a good way to describe that. Yeah. Um, I get even more. It's like everything I got in the aroma, which I always excites me. When I get everything that I got in the aroma, I get in the taste, except even a little more magnified. Like you said, a little to me, a little more funk. Yeah. But it blends in well with a little bit of malt. Snap. Uh, it blends in with everything. Yeah. it <laughs> Two snaps up. Yeah. That's like in living color. <laughs> um, that, and then I'm getting even more of the perfumey floral in there. Like I said, I said, I mean, I threw out rose petal almost as, as kind of an afterthought, but I get a lot of that. Like some sort of flower is in there that I am getting very much in the taste. It just it, on the finish, as the as the funk goes down, yeah, the floral goes up. Oh, wow. <laughs> when the know. funk goes it's my down. My first album will be coming out next week. The funk goes down, the floral, floral goes, goes up. <laughs> nice, exactly. I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would, I, I would agree because, but I do like that it hangs on to the the herb, the the, the that herb quality. Yeah, what kind of you think that like more like a basil, kind of like a fresh basil? Basil or was the first thing I thought yeah. of. Um, I think so. Go in there for another sip. Mm, I really Some like basil, that. maybe even a little rosemary. Yeah, um, maybe. Once again, not to... And then some people might be like, yes, that's exactly what I want. And then many people may be like, ooh, basil and rosemary. Yeah. But we've had beers that was... Uh, we've had a beer that was actually brewed with basil on purpose, the Trade Winds mm -hmm. from Which the brewery. Is, the Trade Winds Triple is great. Um, that and, is, a, that uh, is a great beer. Or even the uh, the one from the the Cezanne de Boeuf. Oh that yeah, had, that had uh, yeah. sage and some other uh, spice or uh, uh, herbs in there. I should say that one I really like from Stone, and those are Stone collaboration. Uh, those are saisons, and that's yeah. yeah. And somehow sometimes they have well, not necessarily funk qualities, but farmhousey qualities. So they they, they can they overlap usually, a little bit. Yeah, usually you let those run a little bit hotter, so you're going to get some of yeah. the more what in other beers is an off flavor in a saison. You're kind of expecting it, right? No, that's because that was how they made. You know, that was how they made them back in the day. I like that because it, it's all, uh, as we always say, balance. They're all balanced yes. in there real well. It's not like, oh god, there's so much of that. Yeah, there's, it, there's, you know, there's the funk, there's the basil, there's or there's the herb, which we think is a little basil and rosemary. Um, there's that little bit you say, a little rose hip. But there's a little bit of citrus, not well, not citrus, but there's some sort of mild. There is a, you know, I was fruit, just about and to then say the malt. There is like a little lemon tinge in there too as well which i'm sure is probably from the brett because you can get those kind of fruit there's yeah. that's kind of mixed in there as well and like the more subsequent sips like kind of once almost like once your palate's gotten used to the other things some other things are revealed and yeah. I, i've kind of gotten the lemon on the last couple of, i think that's really well balanced it's definitely not for everyone but i i really like it uh, i kind of wish i had another one um, <laughs> well cork it <laughs> yeah pop it. no i'll probably I mean, drink uh, it tonight pump it. Oh, okay we'll drink it tonight um but like it's yeah i think it's really good really well it's the only thing, not out of balance, but the the most dominant thing is probably the funk. Is there's you know, but that's like sixty percent or whatever you know, yeah. and everything else. And I'm okay because I, I'm cause okay. This can one. be too funky for me, uh, like you know, George Michael, too funky, a little too funky. Uh, they it's can be, but uh, but this one is not. Um, no, yeah, I don't think a beer could be too sour for me, but a beer could be a little too funky for me. Yeah, I haven't. I have not found a beer that was too sour. 
That is uh, that is quite correct. I haven't found that one yet. <laughs> no, we're still looking. <laughs> and if anyone uh, knows of one that might be too sour for us, you can head over to the website at aboutbeverages.com. You can uh, post a comment there. Uh, send us an email. Uh, you can also, if you are watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and uh, leave a comment there if you've had this beer or even the other iterations of it uh, when they came from Denmark or whatnot. Uh, let us know if you like those as well or where we might be able to find more. And uh, also, while you're there, uh, check out the uh, tasting notes. We will have that uh, for this beer as well at aboutbeverages.com, as well as where it hits on our recommendation scale. But whether we like it or not, you should give it a shot. 